Hey guys, welcome back to my Casper tutorials. And um, sorry it's taking me so long to make another video, but hopefully I can knock out an entire series with Casper. I think it's a great project, and I, I really want to do my part to see what I, you know, see what I can do to to um, to support this great project. Now, in the beginning here, let's go ahead and, and start off simple. If you've seen any of the other videos, I kind of jump right into uh, what you need to do to start scraping. But I think in order to really utilize the skills. We need to start off small and kind of incrementally work our way up. So that's going to be the purpose behind this series. Uh, just make sure you subscribe, do what you can. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for me to actually get motivated to uh, to actually try to make these videos. If they help anybody out, just you know, keep that in mind. I appreciate it. All right, so um, let's go ahead and jump right in and um, and go over some basic details. All right, so first things first, what we need to do is go ahead and create a new file. It's going to be a JavaScript file. So the extension will end in .js, and you can name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to name it test. And just make sure um, you figure out what folder you want to put it in. So it doesn't matter what editor you're using. I happen to be using Visual Studio. But you can use any editor that you want. In fact, you can even use Notepad, but I don't suggest it. But what I'm using right now is um, Microsoft's Visual Studio. And you can actually download that for free. But whether or not it actually works with Python, you're going to want to uh, make sure you look into that. Because part of this tutorial series I plan on doing is actually implementing Python with Casper. So you can see really what an awesome combination the two can make, at least in my opinion. So let's go ahead and start our file. We're going to name it test.js. All right, now first things first, in order for Casper to work, I have previous videos on how to install Casper. It requires Phantom JavaScript. Essentially, Casper is a project built on top of Phantom JavaScript, and Phantom JavaScript is a project, I believe, written in C++, and it's got a bunch of other... Uh, projects built into it that, that make it what it is. So uh, this is just another project built on top of it, making Phantom JavaScript a lot easier to work with. So that's really all Casper is. Now, in order for Casper to be able to use Phantom, there's something that you always have to have at the start of your file. Uh, you need to be able to tell the Phantom JavaScript um, where Casper is. So uh, what we're going to do here is I need to describe the Phantom uh, Casper path, which is uh, important it's actually required so let's go ahead and put that in here now and it's just a JavaScript string that's all this is my Casper is located in my projects directory under Casper JavaScript or Casper JS and that's that's all I need here for my path all right now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to inject uh, the the Casper path um, into Phantom. So it, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, there's another required field. You want to make sure you put Phantom dot inject js, and then we're going to give it the Phantom Casper path that we just set plus we're giving it the location to where it can find uh, the Casper batch file. Now the next thing, which is optional, but you might as well go ahead and add it and get used to adding it. Casper comes with a few methods that uh, make things, they're Casper specific, but like there's uh, certain methods that Casper has built into the project, which allows you to uh, basically associate files together or maybe do like a JavaScript uh, JSON dump or something like that. Um, there, there's just different methods. There's probably like 20 of them. So in order for you to be able to access those methods that are built into Casper, you need to use um, this utils uh, module. So we want to go ahead and define that now. And even if you don't use it, you might as well just have it in your file in case you do need to use it. Uh, but that's what we do right here. So now whether or not, like I said, we use that, that's a different story right now in the tutorial we just want to make sure it's there in case we ever try to reference a method that we think should be there but it, you know it's because we didn't import our utils module so um, the next important thing is that this is what 
Casper does. I mean, this is how Casper lives. We need to go ahead and fire up the Casper session. So we're going to create a Casper variable, and this is really what does all of our magic. So to do that, we're going to say require Casper and then dot create. All right. So that is where everything happens. Now, in order to test our application, let's go ahead and just do a simple test, see if we can get the Google web page. So I'll say casper.start http forward slash www.google.com. All right, and then um, everything is done within methods. So here is a Casper start method with your parameter being the URL. So it'll request that URL. Now, since we're requesting the URL, you always um, you, probably a good idea to put a wait on uh, the request. So I, I generally just wait a few seconds to make sure that the web page has enough time to load. So we're going to start another method to do that. So Casper dot wait. And then we give it how many seconds we want to wait. And this is milliseconds, so 3,000 milliseconds is 3 seconds. And then we define a function. And then just like um, you know, any sort of JavaScript or jQuery that you've done, you have to make sure you close off that function. And then whatever you need to do um, inside is going to be um, you know, inside of this function. So that's whatever sort of code we want to execute after it waits 3 seconds. All right, and just to make sure that we can test the uh, the application here, make sure it's working, I want to go ahead and we'll just print the actual title to the page. Okay. Now, there's two options that you have inside of your function. A lot of people will say this, meaning the, it references the method that it's currently in. And you can do that too. It kind of helps separate Casper from, um, you know, what's going on inside of that Casper function. And we'll go ahead and say this dot echo, and then we're going to say this dot get title, right? And then now before we can actually run the application, we actually uh, we have to specifically say that we do want to run. So at the bottom of our script is always going to have Casper run. And we're also going to want to close the application as well. And when we close the application, we're going to want to put that in its own function. So let's go ahead and do that here at the bottom. And we'll say Casper dot then. We're not going to need to do a wait since we're just exiting exiting the program. So we'll just simply create another function here, and then inside of this, this is where we're going to say Casper dot exit. So it'll shut down the program. Otherwise, if we run it, it'll never shut down. Which I mean, we could still kill the application if we need to by pressing Control C, but uh, no need to do that if we're just going to have a method that turns the application off once we're done. All right, let's go ahead and run this program and see where it gets us. Now, when I run the application, and you'll want to make sure that you follow along in the previous videos where I explain how to install Casper. But part of that installation process is that we um, we put we put Phantom JavaScript on our path so that if you're using Windows. Um, Windows operating system knows when you type phantom js that you're trying to execute a phantom program. In fact, you can see it entered into phantom. And phantom is not even located in the directory that I'm currently in. I just happen to have my scripts right now in a project called uh in, in a projects directory, movie directory and scripts. You can put yours wherever you want. If phantom's on your path, that's all you need to do is just type phantom so it knows that's a phantom javascript program and then the name of your script. In my case, it's test.js. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that the application worked. We said in our application, this.echo, this.getTitle. And this is after we requested the Google page. So we successfully grabbed the Google page. We waited three seconds, giving it time to load, and then we simply said this.echo get title. 
Now, what I was explaining before, as far as this method, it's conventional to say this dot echo or this dot whatever whenever you're inside of a, a function. You probably want to go ahead and do that, but you could also just say Casper dot echo, and it would work the same way. So you see that both methods work the same way, but just conventional to say this, so you can easily separate what's being called from within the method and what's being called from outside of the method, essentially, or, you know, to fire a new method. Anyway, thank you for watching. The next video, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to print screenshots to the uh, sc to any sort of directory that you're using, and that is an, a huge factor because when we're doing these headless uh, browsers, we don't know what's going on. We only you know, think that we know what's going on. And, and when it doesn't work, we don't, if it's like a five step process, we might be on step three, uh, but we think we're on step four. And the only way you're going to know is if you start making screenshots to figure out what the hell is going on. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And I appreciate everybody who's already subscribed and I'll get the next video going. Thank you.